Okay, okay, okay. So today I decided to make my head extremely big. Why? I really don't know why. Just sometimes that's just the natural consequence of the way I have my camera set up, the green screen behind me set up, and uh, additional factors. Okay, so today we're doing problem. Well, look at how far I can reach. Three, one, one, minimum rectangles to cover points. Okay, this is one of those problems where you're given all this additional information and you're quickly curious as to why you're given all this additional information because it doesn't really modify the result of the problem. So sometimes when you solve these problems, what you need to do is you need to figure out, okay, what's actually essential here? Remove all the other fluff, look at the situation in terms of what's actually important, and then uh, solve the problem, okay. But with that said, let's go ahead and get right into it, okay. So you are given a 2D integer array points, okay where point i equals x i y sorry so you have a grid with you know x positions and y positions this should all be pretty uh familiar if you've taken any you know math class right you know if you have x positions and y positions on this grid uh, let's draw a little grid here right you have your y axis and you have your x axis and you know you could have a point here at uh you know this many x i and this much y i so that intersection of those two points would be your x i y i point, right? So it's x x in this di is direction, and y in this direction, which makes that point there. Okay, so that's pretty fundamental, you know, uh, geometry. I don't even know what class you would learn that in. Okay, and you are also given an integer w. Okay, so you're given a bunch of points, right? in this array, so there's gonna be multiple points here like xj and yj and so on and so forth. And you're also given some value w. What's this value w do? I don't know, I guess we're gonna figure that out together. Each rectangle has its lower end at some point xi zero. Okay, so at some point, uh, gotta get out of the way here. At some point xi zero, right? So xi in the distance, zero points up, so that's a corner here. And it's upper end at some point x2, y2. So then there's some other point here like uh, x2, y2, right? And then there's a rectangle that's created in between these points, right? So this rectangle would look something like this, right? So there's one corner of the rectangle here, another corner of the rectangle here, right? At x1, 0 and x2, y2, you make those two points and you connect a rectangle like that, okay? And it's upper end, and then there's just these constraints here, which basically say, like, you know, you can't have a rectangle where, you know, one point is, like, below or left, right? It doesn't make sense. Like, it needs to be in this orientation where there's one bottom left point, one bot uh, top right point, and then you connect them. Um, and there's a condition where x2 minus x1 must be less than or equal to w, okay? So that's where this w value uh, plays a role, right? It plays a role because... This width has to be less than or equal to W, which is just the combination of these two factors, right? So your X2 minus your X1 have to be less than or equal to W. This is where this W term we were talking about before, right, starts to play a role, okay? Um, so it must be satisfied all the rectangles that you draw. Now look at, there's one thing to note here, right, is there's no condition in the Y frame, right? There's no condition about how tall these rectangles need to be. There's only a constraint on how wide, W for wide, W for wumbo, W for wide, how wide these rectangles can be, okay? A point is considered covered by a rectangle if it's within or on the boundary of the rectangle. So what does that mean? It means that if you draw this rectangle right and you wanted to cover a point, like this rectangle, this green rectangle here does not cover this point. Right, notice how it's over here in this point, but if it was like a rectangle as such, right, for example, like this, right, a rectangle that looked like this would be covering the point, even though it's on the edge, it still counts as covering, or a rectangle like this would obviously be covering the point, right, because it's, you know, it's within this rectangle. So if it's within or touching the rectangle, it's being covered by that rectangle. Return an integer denoting return an integer denoting the minimum number of rectangles needed so that such points, so that each point is covered by at least one rectangle. 
Um, okay, so we have all these points. We can draw these rectangles, right? And we're trying to find a way to cover all the points with the least number of rectangles, okay? And you might say, well, then why don't I just make one gigantic rectangle? Like, I'll make a rectangle that covers the entire universe, and that one rectangle covers it. Well, because you have this constraint, right? You have this constraint where x2 minus x1 has to be less than or equal to w. w is a provided value, so you can't just make an infinitely long rectangle to cover the points because there's this constraint. Okay. Uh, so at each note, a point may be covered by more than one rectangle. Okay. So let's look at um, this first example, and let's draw it out and see what can be determined from this about the solution. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just going to, just gonna draw out the, the system and then put each point there, right? Put the two one point, the, two, the one zero, whatever, and then think about the consequences and what that's gonna look like. Okay, so each one of these square boxes is gonna represent one point. Oh, maybe I'll do a little bit more, you know, Additional information here, so it makes sense. Okay, so there's one at two one. So, you know, let's go through some simple uh, uh, graphing here. So two one. So that means we go one two units one up. Okay. There's one at one zero. So one zero. I'm gonna actually do these in different colors. So we got two one. We got one zero. We got uh, one four. So one one two three four. This is actually hard for some reason. I don't know why. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going through the graphing here. We got one, eight. We got three, five. One, two, three, three. One, two, three, four, five. We got three, five. We got four, six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we got four, six. And that's it. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six points. All right. And I got one, two, three, four, five, six points. All right. So we need to find a rectangles that cover this whole thing, right? And again, you might be pressure, you might have the inclination to be like, all right, I'll make one gigantic rectangle. All right, you can't do that. Why? Because well, this width has to be less than w, and our w value here is one. So we can only create a rectangle of width one. Okay, so our rectangle has to have width one. So we can't just go ahead and make an infinitely wide rectangle in order to cover the situation. But what is weird about this problem, and, and if you remember in the beginning, I said there's some unnecessary information as well. We can't make an infinitely wide rectangle, but we can make an infinitely tall rectangle, All right? Because there's no condition that says that we can't, right? So I guess one thing to reason through this is like, you know, maybe you end up making a rectangle of length one and it covers these two. But we're trying to minimize the number of rectangles that we make. So if we're trying to minimize the amount of rectangles that we make, it makes sense to try to maximize the amount of space that you cover with the rectangle, right? So there would be no reason to make a short little rectangle. If I can make my rectangle, there's no limitations, right? There's no constraints on the length, the, the height of my rectangle, only the width, right? Since there's no limitations on the height of my rectangle, I might as well, to cover as much space as possible, make it infinitely tall, right? I might as well make this rectangle touch the freaking moon, and then go past it, right? It's gonna go off the page, right? This rectangle can be as tall as possible, as tall as you can imagine, and then imagine a little bit more because there's no constraints on the height of this rectangle. And if I'm trying to cover as much, much space as possible in this 2D thing, I'm gonna try to you know push it to the limit, right? If I'm trying to cover as many things with as few rectangles as possible, I'm trying to make that rectangle as big as possible, right? There's no, I'm not losing anything by making it as big as possible. So I should make it as wide as possible always, and the width would be one, right? And since they can overlap, there's no issue with thinking about like, what if they accidentally overlap? So I should make it as wide as I can possible and I should make it as tall as I can make possible. And how tall can I make it? I can make it infinitely tall, okay? So if I can make it infinitely tall, well then what is the consequence of that? Well, the consequence is, is that I don't even need to con concern myself where these things are positioned, why, right? The fact that, the fact that, um, you know, these three here, right? This one and this one and this one, they're like at different heights. Since I can make my rectangle as tall as possible, their heights do not matter, right? Because I can always create a rectangle that goes all the way to the top and gets all of them, right? I can always get all the rectangles with one rectangle on the same X value going up. Meaning that, you know, with one rectangle here, I get this one and this one. And even if there was one infinitely higher at the same X position, I would get that one too, okay? So... 
what does that essentially mean? Well, it means that the Y values aren't important. That's all it means, right? It basically just means that these Y values, since I can always create a rectangle that's as tall as possible and there's no constraints, whatever their Y position is, is irrelevant. What is, irrele what is relevant is the X position because I am constrained with the width of these rectangles, right? The fact that this rectangle is shifted over this many units from this one, I can't get it with a width one rectangle. But the fact that this point, sorry, let me rephrase that. The fact that this point is farther to the right, the X value is different than this point, means that I can't get it with the same rectangle, right? Their relative width uh, difference, right? The relative distance on the X axis matters, right? It affects how many rectangles I'm gonna have to make. But the relative height difference on the Y axis that these things are is, is irrelevant, right? The fact that this one is here and this one is here and this one is here in terms of their Y positions or the fact that this one's this high up versus this one being this high up, it's irrelevant because I can always create a rectangle that's tall enough to capture them all. So what can we do with this graph then now that we have that information? Well, we can neglect the fact that their Y positions, their Y positions can be completely neglected. So I'm going to redraw this system on a one dimensional graph and basically just state that, you know, the, 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 the Y positions of these values is irrelevant because I can always create a rectangle that will capture them, okay? So now that I'm gonna draw it again, let's go through this again, and let's just say, let's avoid this Y value. This Y value is irrelevant because I can always capture it with one rectangle. So I have one at zero, one, two. I have, a, I have a, a point there. I have a point at one, zero. I have a point at one, four. So that's just one that, notice I already have one on one. Right, because the only thing that would make these things different on X is their Y value, but their value is different. So I don't need to draw another one here. There's just a one here. And if there's other ones in this position in the Y thing, I can capture with the same rectangle. So I only need to think about the unique number of rectangles that exist. I mean, the unique number of points that exist, because if there's an infinite number of points at different Y values here, I can capture it with one rectangle, right? I can always capture whatever's at this X value with one rectangle, independent if it's one point here or if it's a million points here, okay? Whoa. All right, so we have another one, one, zero. We have a one, eight. Again, I don't need to think about the one again. We have a three, five, so zero, one, two, three. And we have a four, six, zero, one, two, three, four. So now the situation looks a little bit more manageable, right? Because we don't need to think about like this two-dimensional space, right? I literally just took this problem and I took all the points and I said, you know what? Their Y values don't matter because I can always make a rectangle that's unconstrained to meet any Y value. So I'm just going to squish them down into this one axis and I can think of them in this terms, right? So what I have here really is just a system one, two, three, and four, okay? And what are my constraints here? The constraints here is I can only create a rectangle, right, of with one and i'm gonna draw it with this open top to represent that there is no top to this rectangle right so how many rectangles could i make well i could put one here to touch these two and i could put another one here to touch these two so that means i'm going to need two rectangles and as you see here that's the answer now this goes through it and in a way that can be a little bit more confusing right because you're thinking okay there's these two towers i guess right there's these two big rectangles that go all the way up right but really, when you squish these points down, you notice like, okay, these three rectangles are going to be, I mean, these three points are going to be covered by the same rectangle when I squish them all down, because it's only corresponding to one rectangle I need to cover all three of these points, or any other set of points that go all the way up. And this one, even though it's at a different Y value, right, with, with terms of what actually matters is our width, because anything that's above, right, this these two green rectangles will go all the way up and capture those, okay? So that means that I need one here to capture these two, and I need another one here to capture these two, Okay. So I guess the first observation here is, you know, we're taking this problem and we're saying, okay, it looks kind of complicated, but since we can kind of reason through, well, I'm going to make my, rec my rectangle as big as possible. I can make it infinitely big on the Y axis. So any of the Y differences are irrelevant. So I can squish it down to one system and it's easier to deal with that situation there. Now, how do we find the, 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 um, the, I guess the optimal solution for finding these rectangles. Okay. Well, I guess the first thing to notice in this problem, right, is not the first thing. We've already noticed a few things here, right? Is well, we don't need we don't need what? If you had, let's just say we had a problem that ended up looking like this after we drew it, okay? Say we had a system, 
All right, of course it has X and Y values, but I'm going to neglect the Y values because they are not important. All right, so let's draw these Y values, I mean these X values. And if you had points like this, a point here, point here and here, point here and here and here, I don't know. Okay, let's just say for example, we're looking at something like this, all right? Let's uh, move this over so we can get this all in one little pretty picture here, okay? And let's say that your rectangle could only be uh, three wide. All right, so three units wide, this rectangle that we're gonna create. Let's actually leave this open for this open top. Okay, so you have this rectangle that you can create that's uh, three units wide. Now, there's an interesting constraint here, right, which leads you to a certain type of solution, which is you have to cover all the rectangles, right? So you're gonna have to have some rectangle that covers this one here, right? Definitely, right? This isolated point to the left, right? There's gonna have to be a rectangle that covers it, right? No matter what. So you're gonna have to have some rectangle covering this point. And what would be the ideal rectangle covering this point? Well, since it's the first point, you wouldn't want to do this because what if there were points to the right that it could cover, right? You want to you want to maximize the amount of area that you're covering with a rectangle. And since this is the first point, you should make a rectangle where the left edge is here. That way you kind of reach over as far as possible as you can to the right to try to see if there's any other points that you could cover, right? So what does that mean? Well... Because, for example, you know, if there was another point here, you say, okay, I have to cover this rectangle, right? Like, I have no choice. I have to, I have to cover this point with a rectangle. So let me put a rectangle over it. You wouldn't put it here because, you know, you're just wasting space to the left. Since this is the first point, there's no points over here to the left. So I might as well try to maximize the amount of space I cover by taking this rectangle and making its left corner over here. And look at that. I get an extra point as a consequence, right? So now that I have these two covered, well, I had to use a rectangle to cover this point, and this would be the ideal rectangle to use to cover this point because it's, you know, as far right as possible. I try to make it as less left as possible because it's the first point. So then now it's the same problem again. Well, now what's my first point? Now my first point is here. And again, it's the same thing. Would I want to do this? Well, I already know that I'm... I have covered, right? I've already covered all the points before me, so I should play the same game and try to make this as right as possible. All right, now I've covered additional points, right? So now I play the same game again, and I just say, okay, now this is my right point. Should I make it here? No, again, I, mean, I should try to make it, since this is the first point that's not covered, I should make it go as far right as possible by covering these, and that'll give you the ideal solution, okay? So all you have to do to solve this problem is take your points to take your points remove y component cuz the y component does nothing you need to sort it and then you need to simulate greedily all right, and we'll do that with the second example and use this kind of approach and we'll walk through what that actually looks like, okay, on paper. Okay, so in example two, we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, okay? We're gonna neglect the Y point. So what are our points here? We have uh, zero, we have something at one, we have something at two, we have something at three, we have something at four, we have something at five and we have something at six. And we have me not writing that down in a place that's visible. Okay. So we basically remove the Y components. We sort it. Well, it turns out that it's given sort. It's not always going to be like that, right? But it's already sorted with respect to X. And then we simulate this greedily. So here our width is two. Okay. So with a width of two, well, what's my leftmost one I have to cover? That's the first one. 
and I'm going to get a width of two. So that means I'm going to cover zero, one, and two, right? Because it's two units wide. So I'm going to have to start putting my left point at zero, which means that my right point will be at two. So then when I look at the next one, I say, am I covered by my left and right point? Yes, I am. This is in between one and two. I look at my next point and say, am I covered with my right point? Yes, I am. It's between one and two. I look at my next point. It's at three. I say, is three in between my left point zero and my right point two? No, it isn't. So now I have a new right point at three. Right. So now I have a new left here at three. And since my width is two, that means that my right point will be at five. Right? So now I start playing this game. I look at four and I say, is four in between my left point three and my right point five? Yes, it is. I look at five and I say, is five in between my left point three and my right point five? Yes, it is. Then I look at six and I say, six in between my left point three and my right point five? No, it isn't. So I have to create a new left point equals six. And then that would mean my right point equals six plus two, eight, right? Because that's the width. Right, so this is one way of looking at it. Now, of course, then in a graph, you would say, okay, sorry, give me a second. Right, you have points at zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have our, our rectangle, which has width two. So you have a re rectangle of width two. What's the first rectangle you're going to look at? The first rectangle you're gonna look at is the one on the left. and you're gonna put the left point at zero and the right point at two, right? So you go here, you make this rectangle, you count that as one. You look at this point, you say, is it within the left and the right? Yes, it is. You look at this point, you say, is it within the left and the right? You say, yes, it is. You look at the next one, you say, is it in the between the points of the left and the right? No, it is not. So you draw another one, right? Using this greedy approach, now your left is at three, zero, one, two, three, and your right is at four, five. You say, is it in between my left and the right? Yes, it is in between left and right. Yes, it is Le between left and right. Yes, it is in between left and right. No, it isn't. Draw another one like this. And then that's it, right? Now you've made three of these things and that's why your output is three, okay? So that's basically the simulation of this problem. So in, in, in summary, what we do is we, we take our system, we remove the Y components, we sort it, we play this greedy game of, okay, the leftmost one isn't covered, make a rectangle such that it maximizes the amount that it's gonna cover. So the left point is at this thing. Look at each one until one isn't covered, make another rectangle, the left one, the leftmost one that isn't covered, the leftmost one that isn't covered and walk through. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually um, put the solution to this. And uh, I'm doing this so I can create a screenshot that's gonna be used for the thumbnail. I have some software I made that automatically makes thumbnails. It's not that cool actually. It sounds cooler than it actually is but um, it does help a little bit with getting cool looking stuff for videos and all that fun stuff that we like to do. All right, ah! Okay, well, I'm actually gonna move out of the way because no one wants to see me. Boom, that's gonna be my thumbnail. All right, so let's go ahead and write this, okay? So how do we do this efficiently? Well, let's just say our points are then a set because we only want the X components. How if I did this, bruh? Watch this. So, res equals zero. Our initial left point is, uh, there's a couple ways you could do this. Let's just say negative flow infinity because we want to capture, and I'm going to do some complex Python kind of stuff on the fly here, right, to do the sorting and all the all that related junk. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for the X positions in, we're going to have a list of a set of all of the X points in XY in points, for XY in points. So we're going to look just at the X component. We're going to create a set, right? Because you have multiple points that share the same X value, but have different Y values, but those Y values are relevant because we end up like squishing it. So we only need the X points, right? So we're gonna turn that into a set. We'll turn it back into a list. Can you take a set and make it sorted from there? I don't know. So then we're gonna sort it. So we look at them in, in, in uh, order. And then basically all we say is, well, if the current X point 
right? Because we're going in order. So we're looking at the leftmost point that isn't covered because every time we do this, we're going to end up forcing a situation where we cover the thing with a rectangle, right? We say, if X is greater than L plus W, meaning that we have an L point where it's the, the leftmost point of our current rectangle, and then we add in the width. And if the X we're looking at, which hasn't been covered yet, isn't within that range, right? Because L R equals L plus W at the right point of the rectangle is the left point plus the width away, right? So if the current thing, sorry, like allergies. If the current point is greater than that means it's not within the range, right? Then we're going to have to create another rectangle. So we're going to create another rectangle. And then now this new rectangle is going to be at this point. That'll be the left uh, most thing that isn't covered, but we're trying to make it go as right as possible. So the left side of that rectangle will be here, right? We're just going through what we did. And then we just simulate through that game. And at the end, we return res. Now, I'm kind of curious if you can turn a set to a list like that. I don't see why you can't, but sometimes Python has weird rules. Okay. All right. So there you go. There you have it, right? There's your solution. Now, what is the run and space complexity of this? Okay. So for time and for space. So doing some things here, it's going to affect, there might be better ways of doing this slightly. But basically, we, for time, we have to take all the points in x, y and turn it into a set. So it's going to take n time, right? Because we have to take, we have to look at all the points and then turn it into a set. And then we have to sort it. And that's going to take n log n time, right? To take all the x points because they might not be given sorted and then sort them. So we look at, it takes n log n time to do this operation. And then we do n, in the worst case, if they're all unique, right? We have to do n, all the x values are unique. We have to do n operations to walk through this formula of greedily selecting uh, rectangles we're going to create. So that's n log n and then another n here, but that's scaled by this n log n. So this is n log n time. All right. Now, there might be a way to do this with better space, right? You might be able to use points itself and then in place sort it based on the x values and then just look at the x values, but I didn't feel like doing that. But this could be O of 1 if you took points and you in place sorted it right based on the x values but for this i'm actually converting it to a set right i don't even need to convert it to a set actually because you could just walk through without the set but it's just easier that way i guess right but you could do this you could do this in place one time but this is technically n but it could very easily converted to uh, constant space, right? With an in-place sorting algorithm. And it would be a bunch of extra lines to do all that. Um, yeah, so that's it for this problem. There is a slight variant of the solution to this that I saw, which I also thought about, which is, you know, you don't need to keep walking through each one when you create the right point. You could skip by doing a binary search. So if you're curious about what that means, please leave a comment. I, I don't think anyone really is. But basically, at a super high level, what you do is when you know you draw your new left, rectangle, you don't need to look at each one. You can binary search to kind of hop to the next point you would be at where there is no um, rectangle coverage. But that's just a little bit more coding I don't feel like doing, and it, it doesn't even affect the overall runtime because you're going to have to do that sorting process anyways. All right, guys, hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Later.